Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Speaks coming to you live 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Lenny Who Talks, episode number 35 with BSP is in the building. How are you, sir? Well, man, I'm not nearly as good as you, but I am feeling awesome for December. <laughs> if I was in the video, let's say that. So for those of you who are watching the show the first time, this is Millennium Who Talks episode number 35. And if you hear anything that you like, comment below because we can bring it up on the screen. Uh, we have keywords for the show that if you like what you hear and you want to subscribe and, and hear future shows, our keywords today are BSP, like Brian sells Pittsburgh, or Steelers, because I had to because he's from Pittsburgh, or just BSP. All right. So let's get started. Let's get right into it. Want to waste anybody's time? We got thirty minutes here, full of content. So Brian, just to introduce yourself. I don't want to say your last name because I won't say it correctly, like everybody does with my name. Uh, who you are, where you're from, kind of years in the business, background, that kind of stuff. Right. So my name is Brian Tessie. I was born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is where I currently am now. I've been a realtor for finishing my 11th year, eight of them with Remax. Started off with a little brokerage called ERA over here in Pittsburgh. Um, I had a mentor there, but there wasn't enough training as a freshly licensed agent. So I moved over to Keller Williams because they had training programs and books and all this other stuff. Um, I was there for a little bit, and then my mentor ended up opening up his own Remax office about eight years ago. And I was there the day before it opened, and I have been there ever since with Remax. Um, first couple years, uh, first five or six years were lean. Um, the way I got into uh, um, being a real estate agent was I used to flip houses with my own two hands. So I did every, all the work with my own two oh, hands. Hard work. Right. Right. And this is before YouTube and I didn't really know anything. My dad was a car sales. My mom was a server at a restaurant. So I didn't know what I was doing. So we uh, just went to Home Depot and said, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. And they would tell us we buy books and shit like that. So um, that's how I got into it. And then, um, like I said, I was selling maybe four houses a year for the first five years and killing three of them for my own flips. Yeah, killing. I mean, totally upside down. <laughs> and I got three from my own flips, so I charge myself hardly anything to do it. Um, got my license, and I and as the market turned, um, Pittsburgh got loaded with investors, flippers like myself. So you know, I had a certain margin I had to hit in order to take on a flip, take on a project, and uh, the margins just shrunk, 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 and I got out of it and just focused full time as being a realtor. So um, I'm the Pittsburgh guy, uh, number two Remax team in Pittsburgh last year, and I think I'm number one individual agent this year in Remax in Pittsburgh. Wow. Well, first of all, round of applause for you, sir. Round of applause, round of applause. Here we go for you. Wow. Well, let's let's talk about so in the beginning, you're flipping houses, margins start disappearing, which happens in a lot of, you know, you're. I think you're in a similar market to Rochester, similar size, where we don't have those huge flip that house margins like they see on TV, right? right? And so when you went full time in the real estate, like what were some of the challenges that, that you encountered besides everything? <laughs> I was going to say everything. So I don't know what your price point is, but our median price point here is like 160 to 180. Yeah. Ours is 123,750. Yeah. yeah. So we're close. Um, yeah. So the, the challenge was getting leads, obviously. And this is even before, like everybody complains about buying leads from Zillow and buying leads from this person and that person. We didn't have that option back in the day. It was still you know, grunt work. So I would do open houses for my mentor every Sunday. It didn't matter if it was two degrees, 102 degrees, Steeler games. It didn't matter. I did open houses. I beg him to do open houses every Sunday. Another thing I think you and I were talking about before we came live is, again, this is before the internet. Man. I mean, people are just getting into the business now. They're complaining about it. It was so It's so much easier now to be a realtor than it had ever been. So I would beg my mentor, Mark Hanlovich, to let me drive him for free around all day just so I could hear how he handled getting rejected by for sale by owners, um, negotiating home inspections, negotiating prices, the notes he took, the shorthand. And I'm, the, the way I learned, the stuff I learned um, on those journeys, you can't get in a designation, a coaching class, a uh, seminar, a conference, whatever. All right. I mean, that's school of hard knocks on the job training. That's the best way to learn it. Like be there shadowing that person and here you know anybody can follow a script in a class and go oh well how much too much do you feel it is miss but when you're there talking to the person live and a real deal is on the line that's when you yeah absolutely that, that's yeah. really good stuff so how long how long did you kind of shadow him before you went off on your own right so i was with era which is where he was for about 11 months so um i'd say about nine nine or ten months and the beautiful thing jay was that you know i hate rejection 
I'm that guy that hates rejection. So I just watched him get rejected. I got to <laughs> learn from his mistakes. I'm like, you go ahead and get rejected and I'll just learn from it. Right, right. Yeah, so you didn't have to take it personally because they were saying no to him. They weren't saying no to Brian. They say no to Brian. <laughs> right, I'm over here like the golden goose, man. I'm like, that's right. He's the dirty guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny. So when when you went to Remax, did you you saw at that time what year was it? 2010, you said. Yeah, it was about eight years ago, 2010 ish. 2010 ish. So portals are gaining traction a little bit, right? There's videos eh, in its infancy. Social media is around, but people are still saying, should we be on Facebook? What what did you do at that point? Like, what, what did you make a decision? Like, how do I pick which way to go? Right. So as I became faced with, you know, I can't flip houses anymore, I had to, like, take a hard look at what was going to make me money in the real estate business. And I determined that millennials, or the, I don't even think they were called millennials back then, the younger generation was Those the kids. ones. Those right, kids. kids. Those kids play video games. Those are the guys who are going to make us money. So what I did is I just focused everything on technology. Um, I got, earned my CRS designation in Ooh. person. I went to the classes in person to learn everything from the top agents in the world. And, and that made a huge difference. And then the Zillow reviews came out. And that was a, I just thought that was an amazing thing because you can't write a bogus review. Uh, right. Trust me, you cannot. I've tried. You cannot do it. Um, right. and, and I started getting those and I have the most reviews. One of my, the biggest pillar of lead source for me, 50% of my business is Zillow reviews. I've got the most Zillow reviews in the entire state of Pennsylvania. And I don't say that to be braggadocious, but I'm telling you that because that opens up worlds of leads for you. I have sometimes buyers and sellers that will DM me and say, Hey, you know, I read all your Zillow reviews and how you responded to them. You know, we're in this situation. Can you take on another buyer or can you take on another seller? Now, can you imagine waking up, Jay, and having somebody ask you if you could take on another buyer or seller? I'm like, oh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Twist my okay. Yeah. And, and, and it blew my mind because I got immediate um, traction. And I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. And then you're not paying for it. That's the ROI, the return on investment is freaking huge on Zillow reviews. Now, I think you might have to be a premier agent. But mm -hmm. whoopty ding dong, I, I currently pay $295 a month for a partial zip code just to have that premier agent status. Whoopty ding dong. <laughs> whoopty ding dong. Whoopty ding dong. Yeah. So getting the reviews, because this is one of the one of the biggest, not I'll say areas of concern that I hear from agents all over the United States. Like, oh, I can't get them. I can't. I've tried and blah, blah, blah. My clients don't go on. What, what are your, what's your strategy? You, I mean, you must have a strategy if you're so successful at it. Right. So when I first started, it was, a, it was a big deal to get them. So what I would do is I would lay crumbs throughout the whole transaction. Anytime I did something good in their eyes, I would say, oh, that would make a great Zillow review. Just a little gentle selection. Just like if your wife wants Louboutin shoes and she just throws it out there a little bit, you pay attention. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's one thing. And then sometimes I try to get them before the transaction closes because we all know crap can happen at the closing table. I mean, they can go in and delete the review, but it's it's just easier to try to get it along the way if possible. And then what happens is it becomes cyclical. Like as the years pass by, you get leads from the Zillow reviews. So they know that you're going to ask them for a Zillow review. So it just becomes easy. Um, I have created a fake domain or a vanity domain at um, GoDaddy.com, write a Zillow review for BSP. And then what I did is I went to Zillow where the client has to go to actually write the review, copy that and paste that in the vanity domain. So if um, I have a client, I can just say, hey, can you write me a, a Zillow review? I could text it to him, DM it to him, email it to him, the um, www.writeazillowreview for BSP. Because if you make it easy for somebody to do something for you, they're going to right. do it for you. Your chances increase exponentially. So that's one thing I do. Um, another thing I do is I offer, this works for buyers, I offer to buy them as much pizza as they want closing day for everybody that's helping them move as long as they write a Zillow review for me ahead of time. That's another thing that works out. Incentivize them in some way. Yeah. You want to give in order to get. Uh -huh. um, with Remax, the True Ones Miracle Network is a big deal. So my office automatically donates $25 for every transaction. So I tell my clients way ahead of time, after the deal closes, I'm going to take $75 out of, my, of my own money out of my own pocket, donate it to the Children's Miracle Network in your name. You're going to get a card in your name 
as long as you write the Zill review for me. So, you know, that resonates with charity, people that are very charitable and stuff like that. It, it, it identifies with the core values, especially with millennials. Like they care more about, they, they don't care how much you know, so they know how much you care. And they see that you're, you're really giving back to the community and that resonates with them. Absolutely. 100%. And one of the last things I do is I use something called screencast where I record my screen. So I've recorded a little video on how to get to Zillow, just in case that link, whatever reason I don't send that link out, I record yeah. how to get there. So I pull up Google um, Chrome, type in Zillow, I find my, type in my name, and all the while wow, it's creating a video, and then I can send them this video to show them it's an older person, a senior, or something like that. It walks them through. They can watch the video, pause it, rewind it, do it, pause it, split screen it, whatever. And uh, we also use Fiverr to create a PDF of that. So it's like screenshots with arrows and showing them step by step on how to write that review for you. I'll bring this, just want to bring this up on the screen. So screen recording, how to give us, and that's so powerful. I have never even thought about that. And I'm into technology as well, <laughs> like making it easy because it is, it is, it's not easy to give a Zillow review. Like they want it, like here's your blood sample. I want to know like right. your DNA and then making sure that you have been on the prop. Like there's so many verifications. And like you said, so there's three ways you said, mention it during the transaction when they're happy, right? Um, yep. The way was the vanity URL, which is a fantastic idea that forwards to the actual URL that could be Zillow.com slash a million other things. Right. And then the third one, a screen tastic recording or any kind of screen recorder showing them right so that they're right. it makes it dummy not dummy proof but it makes it a dummy proof so it does kind of dummy proof yeah. It, do it. yeah and a pdf we had a pdf done just in case somebody doesn't isn't tech savvy in a video they could print that and don't forget the children's miracle donation that's a big one yeah. yep. and the pizza we buy pizza for them at closing if they write the review and okay. I have I have this all this spelled out, Jay, on a document that says uh, it's a Zillow pledge. So when we sign our listing paperwork, when we sign our offers for buyers, I send this over to them, and it explains it. I find you have a greater chance of success if you set expectations up front. So I'm not going to hit them over the head at the end of the Zillow review. With all the other paperwork, I have them sign a pledge. You can, obviously, you can't do a contract, but it says I will write a Zillow review within one year for Brian Sells Pittsburgh. Uh, I will get a $75 donation. It spells it all out for them. So they know from the jump. And I, I will verbally explain that too. Would you be willing to share something like that? Totally. Yeah, I can share all that stuff. Maybe we'll we'll post it in the comments or something, like a JPEG of it or or a link to it. Yeah. I think that's that's really powerful stuff. That you're hitting them in all, in the beginning, in the middle, towards the end, at the end, after the end. So I'm not even done yet. Let me tell you about the end end. So yeah, it, and yeah. we're in a seasonal market, you and I, so things slow down in December and January. So I have a spreadsheet of everybody that did write a review for me throughout the year. And then obviously I can figure out the ones that don't write a review for me. So whenever the market's dead and it's cold, I would record a, this goes, this will tie in a video. I record a 30 to 40 second video. Hey, this is Brian Tessier. Remember I represented you on one, two, three, anywhere street. And we had uh, mul I got you multiple offers over full price. I know, you, I know you're busy. You didn't get a chance to write a Zillow review for you, but don't forget about that pledge. If you can go to this link and write a Zillow review for me, then that'd be great. And I send that out uh, personalized to them. I don't do a generic one. I'll say their name and the address so they know it's special and I took the time to do it. And I send it out to them via bomb bomb. And of course, you know, you can track if they open it, if they watched it. And I'm telling you, in December, I send that out. January, I start getting reviews. Nice. So in December, you track who hasn't given you a review from that year that you've done business with because they're probably sitting at home by the fire because there's a foot of snow outside. <laughs> they're not going anywhere. There's a travel advisory. Yeah, well, I have time now to right. get a review. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, idea. they're already moved in. I mean, they're settled. So then that ties in. You you brought up bomb bomb, right? So let let's yeah. talk a little bit about video and how you use video because that's one great way you just said. But there's um, there's a million other ways because I I know you you do a lot with video. Your number five overall video influencer by bomb bomb this year, 2018, right? Right. Absolutely. Right on that. Yeah, I'm proud of that. I mean, last year I was in 2017. I think I was on honorable mention, and I got to tell you, that kind of pissed me off. I was like, an honorable mention. I've got to be uh, like the I'm guy. Not. Yeah, you're competitive. Yeah, I got I'm with you. Right. <laughs> and, yep. Yep. So, I mean, the way I use videos, if I get a higher end or a luxury listing, I always try to do some sort of snappy. I have a professional do a snappy video, 59 seconds. So we'll have like a nice car pulling in or out. We'll have drone video, and I have um. 
a mailing list just like anybody else. It's all uploaded to BombBomb. And I don't care if they're buyers, sellers. I have developers, local developers in Pittsburgh on there. It doesn't matter. I send out that video to them and they get to see. And I think actually Ethan Butte from BombBomb is on there. That may be how he even saw it. Was um, He's on that list. And I send out those videos. I don't care if it's a buyer or a seller. I do it because I know it's eventually going to bring me business. If you can show your professionalism, it's going to ring true. Um, so that's how I use bomb bomb. And I try to record the same video for Facebook, bomb bomb, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Those are the platforms I use. Yep. So what kind of video again? So I'll, if it's a listing, yeah, I don't do it for every listing. It's just the nicer listings, 300,000 in my market and up are nicer listings. So I have a company come in and they'll record. Sometimes I'll be the actor. Like, uh, they'll, record me getting up in the morning, pretend fake getting up in the morning, hitting an alarm clock, groggily yeah. walking into this nice master bath. Gotcha. And I know, um, you know, have me coming out of the briefcase, driving with my Tesla in and out of the garage, showing the lifestyle, they call them lifestyle videos. Right, right, right. So let me just bring this, this car up here and see if it's ever been in one of the videos. Yeah. That one there. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 that, that's been on a lot of them. So I, um, I'm big on Instagram. It's one. It's my new favorite platform. It's become the biggest out there. Yeah. Um, if you go to my Instagram at Brian Sells Pittsburgh, shameless plug, you will see that car and you'll see examples of what Jay and I are talking about. So of course I want you to follow me, but you're also going to see tons of examples of what's coming out of my mouth. So I'm going to just put in the comments, below. it's at Brian Sells Pittsburgh, right? On, right. on the IG. Yep. At Brian Sells Pittsburgh. If you just Google that every, I come up everywhere. There is no other Brian Sells Pittsburgh. Ah, branding. Well, you know, branding is working. Just Google it and you'll find me everywhere. Absolutely. Pittsburgh. So how else do you use video? You so I like shock value. Um, not, I know not everybody can do this. So in July, I had a $800,000 listing with in-ground pool. So I actually recorded myself diving off the uh, diving board and coming up and laying on a beach towel. And then I had a little snippet of me coming out of the pool under their cabana, opening up my laptop, pretending I'm working. And then I even had a waterproof GoPro one time that was on my head, slid down the slide in the water and come out. And I made a whole bunch of those little snippets and I would throw those up on Instagram over time. And they always get tons and tons of views. Okay. I like that a lot. So anything live, do you do anything live or just mostly pre-recorded? So I, I'm not a big fan of live because the reception seems to always break up. It's always grainy. I just did one the other day. My dad DM me. He's like, dude, that, it sucks. I was like, it's just a teaser. I mean, it's not a professional video, so I'm not a big fan of it. And as you know, live videos have to be the longer, the better. So I don't usually sit there and do a big, long video. I'm just going to do like a little sneak peek of the place, something like that. So I'm kind of getting away from Facebook live. I never really grasped it, adapted to it too much, but I'll do Instagram live. Instagram stories are my number one viewed uh, platform more so than the Instagram post itself. So let's let's uh, bring it into the TV. Then, how do you what do you feel how do you feel about that? You've been using that. You feel like it's going to get better. We hope it gets better. Which platform? Instagram television. Oh, I don't know. I tried it when it first came out, and yeah, nothing. I, I didn't really. Yeah, uh, I didn't get it. And uh, you know, I don't watch anybody else's either. We all know short is better. I right. mean, I'm not going to go to Instagram television and watch what you're doing all day. I mean, I love your content, but I'm going to go to your story. Just check it out real quick and then move on. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's talk, it's speculation, but it has to get better. I don't see it really going away since they have 600 million users or whatever, however many users they have, and it's tied to Instagram. But I think it'll get better with tags and searchability and stuff that YouTube has because right now it's just kind of you see what people who you already follow are posting, and it's kind of so random, like you said. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's only so much time in the day. I mean, you know, we're professional realtors, not a professional video watcher or whatever, so... <laughs> <laughs> Those are our children. Our children are <laughs> our kids. The kids of tomorrow. All right. So then let's tie that in with like your social media platforms. You said you like LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram, and anything else? Did you say Snapchat or no? Um, no, I don't use Snapchat. I tried it, couldn't stand it. I mean, I like Instagram stories, and it you know it feeds off of my Instagram feed, uh, yeah. and they grow each other, in, in my opinion. So LinkedIn's one of my new big ones. I like. I don't know if you've had any success with that. Me, I, I'm not a big. I love. I love Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. I mean, look, like you can't be the master of all. I always say, like, and at LinkedIn, I have a good profile. I just don't. I don't do anything else with it. How are you using it? 
So I make it super simple. I record that one minute or less video, whatever it is, and it goes to Facebook, it goes to Instagram, and it goes to LinkedIn. So I have a potential seven-figure buyer that found me on LinkedIn because of one of those just listed videos I did. And we haven't closed the deal yet. I showed him a couple houses, but nonetheless, he's not on my Instagram. He's not on my Facebook. So they're all separate channels. My Facebookers aren't necessarily on my Instagram anymore. Instagrammers are younger generation. They ain't on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's all professionals. And I get nothing but great feedback. I've got an interview to go to a BNI group with by a vice president of a major bank. That I mean, because of LinkedIn and the stuff I post. I, if, I, if you couldn't get her on the phone, I couldn't email her and get that type of interaction with her. So LinkedIn. Same same content as all the other platforms. I literally record it from my phone, and if you organically upload it to these platforms, they get more traction than if you don't organically. So I post it to um, Facebook, write up my little description, copy it to the clipboard on my phone, upload it to Instagram, paste, upload it to LinkedIn, paste, done. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it brings up a good point. I know this already, but LinkedIn, the the average – income of somebody on there is six figures plus right Talk about you know are they qualified i would hope so i mean they have the ability to purchase you know, yeah it's okay you're going to reach a different audience there that i think that we all as realtors want to reach in my opinion so let's talk like you're branded so well with your area and i always talk about this when people say oh i want to be popular in my you know, oh, where do you sell real estate? New York. Well, New York's a big state, okay? Right. So like, you're, you know, so you're Brian sells Pittsburgh. At what point did you realize, like, hey, I want to specialize in this area? And, and how did you do that? And did you just reserve a bunch of URLs and start using it? Or Right. No, so I think I was turned on to that by my one of my CRS classes. I learned the instructor said you want to get the cells, whatever city you're in. And uh, I guess every city is different. But Pittsburgh doesn't necessarily mean just the Pittsburgh proper, the inner core we all know it is a greater Pittsburgh area, so it, it gets to the suburbs and everything else. So we just about every new agent that comes on board in Pittsburgh now is so-and-so sells Pittsburgh, Gary sells Pittsburgh, Jane sells Pittsburgh. So it's a good thing I did capture that, but it tells you exactly what I do. It's actually Brian sells Pittsburgh real estate, but it gets truncated in a lot of platforms. It tells you where I am and what I do. There's no question about it. Who I am, where I am, what I do. Done. Okay. And so, but how do you, like the content you're posting, is it specific to Pittsburgh, a lot of this stuff? Because I see like, you know, like you're at, you're at the Penguins game or you're at, you know, you're doing all this stuff related to the area and kind of identifying yourself as somebody who's out and about and like the go-to guy, right? I mean, that's from when I, when I look at your social media, that's what I see. And I think that's what you're trying to accomplish, right? 100%. I mean, we learned at Triple Play about community videos, and I'm going to eventually get into that. It's a more time-consuming professional thing. But there, I like to jog. I like to bike. I like to drive cars. I like to ride boat, ride in boats. So if you can get a video of wherever you're at, like I'll just do a little Instagram story in front of the Steeler game, the morning of the Steeler game or the Pirate game, um, at the Penguin game, like you said, or a new trail that opened up. And once you get those followers and use those hashtags in the stories, Pittsburgh, et cetera, you just create a following. And it takes time. It's you know People think everything's – People nowadays think everything's automatic. Like I'm just going to start it, and you know, all these followers. You, you, you've got to work at it, and work at it, and keep at it, and consistency, consistency, consistency. So repeat that again for those who might have missed it because it's so important. Like I, every class that I did, they were like, "What's the magic bullet?" No, what can I post right, right now that it's going to bring me millions of dollars tomorrow? And the answer is, it's it's not a sprint; it's a marathon. But I want you to just kind of say it again. Like it takes time. You're not going to see immediate results. It takes time. You've got to stick with it. You can't give up on it. You've got to do. You've got to have consistency. If you don't know what to post, follow Jay. Follow myself. Doesn't matter whether we're in your market or not. A lot of people will ask me, you know, um, what do I post? Or I even have one person message me. Can I, um, can I follow your postings? Well, yeah. Just find that person on social media, and it just it's called R and D. You rip off and duplicate what they're doing for your area. I mean, we're not competitors. I'm not a competitor with you. I want to. I want you to better yourself by consistency grind at it fail if you're not failing then you're not trying different stuff i fail more than i succeed with social media just wrap it up and throw it away and move on right i mean we were talking about that before we started about you know how we've done things and then realize it's a big cluster <laughs> of mistakes right and then real oh, that didn't work okay i realized that look at i go live and i get pixelated and people can hear my audio and it really 
it's not great for my area. Okay, now I've learned that. And now for you, it's like pre-recorded stuff works better. And like for me, I'm not that I'm lazy, but I'm busy, some so busy sometimes. Like I feel like live video, it's easy. I do it, it's done. I don't have to edit it anymore. I don't have to send it to somebody because if I had to do that, it wouldn't get done. Like I, I right. know, you know, my personality type. So I think the answer is do what you're gonna do, what works best for you. Right. Especially yeah. if you're talking about video and you're talking about social media. Yeah, the best social media platform is just like a CRM. It's the one you're gonna use. The best type of video is the video you're gonna use. What works for J Man isn't gonna work for Bri Man, B Man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and you know, social media, those are the platforms that work for me. Maybe Pinterest works for somebody else. I mean, you got to stay in your lane. What's working for you? Give it a shot. Try it for a month. Try it for two months. There are some things that um, when I had no money, I would just do everything that was free, free of uh, charge. And then as income got better, every once in a while, I'll lock myself in a year contract with something and I'll, I'll give it a year to see if it works. A lead source, a video, this or a new tool or whatever. And if it doesn't, just move on. It was a failure and move on to the next thing. So what kind of tips could you give to somebody who's wants to get started in video? They don't like how they look. They don't all oh, they need professional equipment. They, all the excuses that we hear, right? So what, what are your tips? Yeah. So my tips are, and you know, I've learned this from you is you just get out there and do it. That is what you look like. I mean, you're going to have to meet them in person at some point in time. What are you going to do? Come with a picture of you all made up in front of your face so they can't see you. No, right. it's you. Don't worry about it. You don't like what you sound like. I hate what I sound like. It, it doesn't matter. So I do one shot. I record one time. That's it. And I post it and I never watch it. And so do you do, when you do the professional ones, you're obviously sending it to like a professional editor or you have like a crew and, and that kind of stuff. They're in Pittsburgh. They charge about $500. They, if I need to be there to be a model or an actor or whatever it may be for that specific house and what I'm, the point I'm trying to get across, I mean, they come with their drones, their licenses, then videos, and they shoot it all, edit it, and within 48 hours, they have it back to me for about $500. And I don't do that for every listing, just a kind of a higher-end one. Right? Well, setting yourself apart from the competition. But it, yeah. let's say if somebody wants to, if they had the choice between being in it or hiring an actor or having somebody – necessarily a professional actor, but having somebody be in the video on their behalf, would you recommend that they be in it? Um, yeah. I mean, if, if, if it's price, it depends on the size of the house. Like in my market, 160 is a, you know, that's our average price point. If I got a seven figure listing and it had rooftop decks with a helicopter pad, I'll spend the money. I mean, I may not even sell that house, but I will get business from okay. that marketing. And that's what I'm doing now. I have these big Goliath brochures in one of my developers properties. It's this big, a sweeping brochure that's color and glossy. I'm never going to sell that house from that brochure, but that developer loves it. The contractor that did the work loves it. The photographer loves it. Everybody wants this brochure and I'll get business just from this brochure. Yeah, that's a great point. All right. So any other kind of advice you want to give to folks that are just this technology stuff? I don't know if it's for me. <laughs> um, I mean, you just got to try it. I mean, you, you had mentioned what kind of tools do I use? I mean, I'm not too proud to admit it. I use a selfie stick uh, and I think that's a big deal. I've seen a lot of realtors finally going to use in video, but they're doing the phone. It's like right here and I'm seeing up their nostrils and everything else. So my, my tip is I just got a selfie stick from Amazon, 30 bucks. It's a tripod too. Yeah, I hold it out there with a clip on. I don't have it here. A clip on uh, wide angle lens facing my selfie direction. So what that does is that takes you kind of, it blends you in because it brings in more of the background. And if you're trying to talk in front of a new listing, you could see the listing behind you and not so much you. You want to get the camera away from a foot from your face. Nobody wants to see up your nose. I mean, or what you had for lunch. <laughs> 50 bucks uh, for those tools. 50 bucks. Okay. Anything else like lighting or... Audio microphone. You, I do have a lapel mic that it's a wired one because I just I like that um, confidence and it's going to work. Uh, I don't use that often because a lot of the videos are just like quick and on the fly. Like you said, you don't want to edit. That's why you do live. I don't want to edit either. But I mean, I may just be jumping out of my car, jumping in my car. I'm not going to set up a mic and all this other kind of stuff. But um, I do have a mic for interviews, and I have these headphones, and I don't do any lighting yet. I haven't gotten into that that much yet. It seems like too much of a production for me. Yeah. Well, I think for it all depends on the lighting. Like you have pretty good lighting where you're at your house right now. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good lighting. So it's, and you have a hat on. It's still pretty good lighting. Right. All right. For some people to be like, you know, I'm not, <laughs> sucks here. Oh, man. Okay. So let me just, I'm going to bring up a couple more photos here. We have, is this Pittsburgh Real Producers? Is this like a magazine or is this something that was? Yeah, it's a, um, I, th I think it's more than just Pittsburgh, but they have like a rural producers thing where they, sh every once a quarter, they have sponsors, they have an event. So the top 200 are invited and we all get to physically mingle with each other, which I think is a fantastic idea. And they have a top producer on the cover and then they have an up and comer coming in the magazine. Um, so it's a local thing, but I, I think it might be more than local. I'm not positive. Okay. And then do you, do you find that networking with other top producers helps your business? And there's people that like, is it open dialogue or do you get some guys that are like, listen, Brian, I'd love to share with you, but I can't. I can't. <laughs> I don't think uh, I don't think any conversation lasts more than ninety seconds there because there's so many people, and I I'm a big social media guy. Like I just kind of want to spout information. I don't really want you to react. Keep it to yourself, type of deal. So when we see each other in person, it's really nice to get out from behind the email, get out from behind the phone call with people you're doing transactions with, and put skin on skin, and and you know see them, and it gives you more of a I don't know, like a, like a bond, so to speak, than just a binary finary in an email. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm gonna bring this up because I I I feel like you know your health is wealth. I'm always a big proponent of that. So that who's this beast right here? Ah, uh, it's a young man. That's a lot of Photoshop <laughs> going on. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. So, so you, with all, everything that you do, all the sales and everything that you stay active, you still kind of like you said, you're running, you're biking, you're. How do you find the time? Because I, I know like a, we're coming into the new year. We're going to see a lot of people going, new year, new me, Brian. I'm going to yeah. lose the weight. I'm going to get in shape. Like what – how do you – how do you overcome the excuses that everybody has? That like they don't have the time. They don't have all the rest of the garbage that you hear every day. Right. So, and I'll even hashtag a lot of times, there's no sense having wealth if you don't have health. I mean, it doesn't matter if you have kids or don't have kids. If you're out there slaving to make all this money for your family, if you're not taking care of yourself, it's, it's all kind of pointless. You're going to die soon. So – um, I just do short, short, tiny workouts often. Like I do CrossFit a lot. Sometimes I'll just jog three miles in the morning whenever I have time. But um, it gets to a point whenever you're doing it so much, so often, so many years that if you don't do it, you start feeling like, oh my God, I'm getting sick. I'm going to die. I'm going to get fat. I got to get out there, blah, blah, blah. So I get cabin fever kind of. It's like, <laughs> I haven't ran it yet. I know exactly. Yeah. And you got to make it enjoyable. Like I, I moved to the city of Pittsburgh because I couldn't stand, like I would rather take an off day than run on a treadmill. I mean, I'm just not going to do it. But if I run through the city, there's different sites. It's exciting. I bike through there. You got to make an environment that's going to be conducive to something you like to do. It can't be forced, so to speak. Get a partner, right? get a friend to do it. Right. Accountability partner like that. Totally. Okay. Anything you want to say in closing, kind of, if you were, if you were the wise Brian you are today talking to the young Brian who's just about to start flipping houses and getting into real estate or just anybody starting brand new today, what kind of advice would you have for them given your experience, your knowledge, your expertise? Right. So uh, my favorite advice to give in this landscape that we're in nowadays, Jay, is if you're a new agent or you're a struggling agent, try your best to get on with the team. Like I told you, Mark Hanovich, I went with him as my mentor and he, he I wasn't on his team, but just being able to be – in that physical environment with these people, you're going to learn a lot. If you have some expendable cash or if you are okay with investing in your business as you should be, get a coach. Uh, I coached with Tom Ferry's organization for two years. And what I learned was mind boggling. And I still have Katie Lance, who's my social media coach. Um, you can't beat a coach. So get a coach. Get a coach. Get a Don't be too proud. Yeah, we can all, it doesn't matter what level of business that you're at. If you're watching this, you're a brand new agent or you're an agent who's been in business 30 years, we could always learn. And if from having somebody to hold you accountable, I think is the, is the biggest thing to say, hey, Brian, this is what I'm committing to this week, this month, this year. And then at the end, you go, Jay, what's up, bro? You said you were going to do this. And I'm like, oh, damn it. <laughs> I want to have that conversation, you know? So absolutely. Yeah, it's a great accountability is huge and listen you know what you're you're a techie guy it, it changes so quickly uh, i mean the way we do things now is different than last month before the internet i mean it was the same shit every day go and sit at the office put the sign on i'm your local expert you can only see properties if you come to the open house man it is different yeah coaching go to seminars
Oh, all right. Well, Brian, I just want to say thank you so much for your time. Again, if you're watching this, just Google Brian sells Pittsburgh. He's going to come up everywhere. Okay. Follow him. He's a great guy. See, you know, check out his videos. Cause like he said, R and D is a big part of it. Rip off and duplicate, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If somebody's successful at something, uh, a lot of great tips. And we're going to actually, we'll post in the comments below his uh, PDF that he uses to, to kind of get reviews more often and how it helps him with his business. So again, if you're tuning in for the first time, if you comment below either BSP, like Brian sells Pittsburgh, okay, or the Steelers, or spell out Brian sells Pittsburgh, you will be subscribed to watch our show. A little messenger bot will contact you. You say yes, and we'll let you know the next time we go live. Because Millennial Who Talks is real stories from real estate rock stars from all over the world where our only goal is to inspire you to do better in real estate. So thanks for tuning in. And Brian, thanks again. Thanks for having me, Jay. Have a good day.